Hello and welcome back to my Factorial 1.0 tutorial Let's Play series on Exterminator and thank you for joining me again today. Uh, there was not an episode yesterday, unfortunately. I apologize. I uh, I really was not, not feeling well at all. Uh, not feeling super great today, but I, I am excited to be here. I, I do want to record an episode, so we're here. And uh, there were a few mistakes I made last episode you guys pointed out um, in the comments, so thank you very much for that. Uh, we have... Uh, green circuits going and yes uh the last episode when i was going on my little uh, liquid rant and plate and building this in the background i messed this up a little bit i had these long-handed inserters uh pulling from here uh or sorry outputting onto the iron belt incorrectly so i've turned them around these obviously are still not working just due to a lack of copper not getting to the end there and then also we have placed a miner uh over here somewhere i think here that had some coal in it i just pulled it up for now uh, all the lot irons backed up. I don't really want to throw a filter in there at the moment. It is easy, but I just assume pull it up at the moment. Um, I suppose this one does too, so really we need to go fix that. I didn't actually notice that one was. Um, but today, what we're going to do today is we're going to play around with some robots. Now, much like trains and some of the other concepts we've covered in the series, uh, this will be a multiple episode uh, concept walkthrough, basically. Uh, you know, this is actually a fair bit to be pulling up. Okay. Uh, change my mind we're going to filter this out so this goes on to this line um so since it's only on that line i'm just going to put a filter right here um but yes yeah, so this is going to be a multiple episode uh topic robots because uh, there's two types of robots and they do fairly different things uh and then also uh i think it's best to explain them while I actually show them and I can't actually show you the other type of robot properly at the moment So we're just going to start with the one uh, Construction robots and so I just I'm mentioning this because I don't want you to think that I've just forgotten or decided not to cover the logistic robots um, They're a fair bit more complicated and it's it's really best to show you them while I explain it uh, And we haven't quite unlocked those yet. So Robots are a fantastic part of the game. Uh, they are really something you achieve, uh, you know, start getting into late game. And you, you can get construction robots. Got a nice achievement. Uh, you can get construction robots earlier. We've actually had them for a fair bit. Uh, and provided you have uh, the other things unlocked and the materials to do so, you can get them working. Uh, so the, the, here, the, the core differences between construction robots and logistic robots is uh, it's really somewhat in their name, is the construction robots do construction in construction only, or deconstruction uh, in those two categories. So they will place items down, they, they, they will tear items up that you've marked for deconstruction uh, and stuff like that. They will do repairs. Uh, they, they don't actually transport items like throughout your factory from like one assembling area to the other assembling area. That task lies purely with, with logistic robots. And uh, just kind of vice versa, logistic robots will not do any building. Uh, you know, they, they won't place blueprints you, you've, uh, you know, set to be placed down. They won't tear up things you mark for deconstruction. The logistic robots will transport things throughout the factory. They will bring you your character items when you request them, which we haven't quite gotten to yet. Uh, they will take trash from your character, which again, we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, now, one, there are some little edge cases here where I believe, unless this was changed, um, if you mark a chest of items, so if we had a chest full of items and we mark this to be deconstructed, um, the, the construction robots will actually take the items in this to storage. Uh, that, that is really one, the only case where they will actually be transporting items like within the factory. Uh, but that is still kind of within the construction deconstruction realm because they only do that when you mark it for deconstruction. Uh, so construction robots are obviously the simplest of the two. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and make some now because we have a RoboPort. In fact, I do also want to just make an additional RoboPort here uh, so we can have two. I think two is a is a very good starting point. One, uh, in my opinion, is very limiting uh, with what you can do. And we're going to pick up just some Robo frames here. So these are very cheap, very, very easy to make, just electronic circuits and flying robot frames once you've made these and you can see all these alerts popping up um, and you can see they're now working so what is happening is they are using this personal robo port of mine uh, which is is what robots work with either personal robo ports or actual robo ports which you place in the world um, and 
they use it for charging, for docking, uh, and then for their coverage area. And anything that's a ghost or blueprint, uh, they will place down. As you can see here, they're doing this with the belt. Anything that needs repairing in your range, they will do that. Now, if we take a look at our armor, also a quick tip someone mentioned. If we go into character, um, you can actually open your equipment grid here. So this is easier and safer since I mentioned the left clicking is bad. If you just click this, this is a very good tip. Um, thanks to someone in the comments of last episode, you can open it like that. Um, so we can see here, this has a construction area of 30 by 30 uh, tiles. Uh, for reference, a, a belt is a tile. So uh, one way you can look at this uh, is just by taking a blueprint, for example, uh, and then that's a blueprint book. Uh, is you can take a blueprint and do this, or you can take a deconstruction planner would probably be easier. And uh, this will show you the range, this green square, much like a turret range, but turrets are in circles. Um, and this is the range from your character that the robots can work. So you can see this barely stretches out to here, um, but they're not doing any of this work because it's outside the range. As soon as I move into this range, you can see these guys take off and start working. Okay, uh, so it's 30 by 30, and it has a robot limit of 10, meaning that it can only really support uh, charging and docking and use of 10 robots. So I have 15 robots, but with just one RoboPort, uh, we're only going to actually be able to use 10 of those at any one time. Uh, however, I'm going to take out an energy shield. Uh, now, one note is when you pick these up and move them, it does discharge. So that is such as something to be aware of there. Uh, and we will now have a robot limit of 20 because much like exoskeletons, this stacks. In addition to that, the area stacks. You can see our coverage area is now much bigger, double, in fact, what it was before. Uh, it's now 60 by 60. Uh, and... If you put another one, it would be 90 by 90, etc. There are actually level two uh, versions of the RoboPorts, which allow more robots, faster charging, I believe, and larger construction area. And uh, that's the basics of construction robots. Like I said, if I mark things for deconstruction, they will deconstruct them and take the items, in this case, for the personal use to me, to my character. Uh, and if I have things ready to be placed, they will place them uh, out of my inventory. Uh, same with repairs, they will repair with repair packs from my inventory. Uh, however, you have these RoboPorts. Let's uh, pick up some gears just so we don't have to do that. Um, we have these RoboPorts which act basically exactly the same except you place them in the world and they have a much larger supply area and don't really have a robot limit. They have a charging uh, like per like at a time charging them you can see their robot charge rate four at a time so it can charge four robots at a time and, and this is visually indicated too just on the graphic of it you'll see uh, it also does have a supply area so the difference between a personal roboport and a in world war roboport the main difference is this uh, is where logistic robots will interact with uh, again, logistic robots you can't actually use from your inventory or with personal roboports they just won't interact with them. Uh, however, with these RoboPorts, you can see there's now an orange area. And so we have two areas represented here. We have uh, the green area, which just like the personal RoboPort is the construction area. As you can see, it's much larger. Uh, and then within that, we have an orange area. And this orange area is the logistic area. And this is where logistic robots can work. Uh, now for clarification, um, Part of it overlaps and part of it doesn't. So, I mean, maybe that I didn't say that quite right. Uh, the construction robots can work within the logistic area. So it's not like the construction robots can't work within the orange area. They can work anywhere within the green or orange area, basically. From the roboport out to the edge of the green area is where construction robots can work. Logistic robots, however, are limited to the orange area. They can't go um, outside that unless you connect roboports because the range is just limited. You know that the range is, is what it is what it shows there um, so I can I'll place this and uh, it does need electricity so you need to connect it to the power grid it does take a fair bit of electricity so definitely worth noting uh, but I want to show you when you connect these uh, you can see this yellow line here and this is showing they're connected and you can see we now have two orange boxes two green boxes and they're overlapping um, so if we connect it like this that now extends both the areas and as long as they're connected 
this is considered one robo network, one robot network, which means logistic robots, construction robots can traverse throughout this entire area for each of their dedicated sections um, and such. Now, these don't obviously have infinite connectable range. You can see it's basically uh, up to where they touch. Once they separate the areas, um, they're no longer connected. So if I were to do this, what I've done at this point if I, is I've actually created two entirely separate uh, networks, which means that any construction logistic robots within this network will not be able to uh, necessarily work within this network. Now, uh, the construction area is large enough to where they will they do overlap slightly, uh, but they're still considered separate networks. Uh, the logistic areas, however, do not overlap. So those robots just will not be able to traverse past this gap, essentially. And you don't just have to connect them directly in a line. You can connect them any which way you want, 360 degrees around. As long as the line stays connected, you are still considered in one network and the robots can move within this. Okay. And uh, we'll go into all the chests and everything like that once we get logistic robots, um, at least all the logistic chests that are specific to the logistic robots. We do have two chests unlocked already. And uh, I promise after this we'll actually be doing some physical work, but it is important to explain these concepts before I just start using them. So we have two chests here. We have a passive provider chest and we have a storage chest. And these are both logistic chests in the sense that they're just for robots. I suppose robot related chests for this purpose would maybe be a better uh, definition here. Uh, and you can see it has a little definition, makes its contents available to the logistic network. And this one is a long-term storage for the logistic network. So these work similar, and they also work differently. Uh, the passive provider, anything that is in this and with, is within a robot range, a roboport range, uh, one you place in the world here, is... In the network and you can see it was flashing that little symbol saying it's not in a network but now it is even though this is not powered and uh these guys act as a providing source providing chest so uh they store items just like any chest except the difference is robots can access them both construction and logistic robots can access them uh one key thing to note here though is items cannot be put into this with robots. Uh, they can be put into this with inserters or by hand. However, robots can never actually deliver to these chests. And this is why it's a passive provider. It's passively providing to the network. You can insert into it, much like I'm doing with this, like these chests over here. You can st stick stuff in here by hand. Um, and then robots can pull from this passively. Uh, and and that's, that's how this works. Uh, now the storage chest works in a similar way uh, in the fact that it supplies uh, robots in the same way. The difference is this can accept items from robots. So with this being storage, this is uh, this is where robots will bring uh, all items to be stored that don't have a uh, dedicated area necessarily. So to put that another way, uh, if I were to mark something for deconstruction, uh, with and then the robots within my main network deconstructed it everything that was marked for deconstruction would then go into storage okay and that's that's where they'll put it uh, again robots can pull back out of this uh, but they can also put into it uh, and then also anything that I trash from my character which again we haven't touched on but it's basically just like saying I don't want this stuff in my inventory take it away um, wh when I do that that will also go into storage. And as you can imagine, this gets quite messy. Now you can set a logistic filter, one filter uh, per chest. So I just basically said only gears can go in here. And this can be a nice way to somewhat organize it. However, if you don't do that, it will just fill with anything. There's, there's no rhyme or reason necessarily. I think the robots do tend to try to put things in a chest where the similar item is already located. So if there's wood in here and I deconstruct trees, I think the robots will usually prefer to put the wood in here since there's already existing wood, uh, but they will also put other stuff. Uh, so that's that's the difference. This is why you don't want to use uh, storage chests for uh, like having machines output into the network. 
So say, for example, I wanted uh, electric engines in my network, I would want to have an inserter inputting into a passive provider chest. Because if I have it put into a storage chest, what's going to happen is it's going to get clogged up with all this other stuff the robots are putting in here, which is not really relevant to the electric engine output, if that makes sense. Uh, and there's a lot more interaction with these once we get the other logistic chests, but I think that's something to cover in a separate episode. Uh, and then lastly, these RoboPorts can hold robots. They can hold up to uh, eight stacks here. Uh, they stack in 50s, the robots. And they can also hold repair packs. Uh, now, robots in this main network will take repo uh, repair packs either from a RoboPort or from storage or passive provider chests. So you don't have to put them in the RoboPort. They will take them from either of these two chests uh, and, and, and use them basically just the same. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind there. And we're going to go ahead and tear this up. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do about crafting a few more of these. So I'm going to craft five more to get us to 20, uh, since that is our limit. And we're going to start building... Uh, I think we're going to try to start building some rail. Now, I, I have to admit, I, I, I am a bit on the fence here folks, because I know I very, very strongly indicated in a previous episode that I was absolutely not going to import blueprints uh, into this series, and at the time, I, I meant it because I had not thought of rails. Uh, however, <laughs> and I'm, not, I, I, I'm, a, I'm still a bit undecided, I think perhaps we'll do some work with rails, and then we'll make, I, I would like you guys to voice your opinions and help me make a final decision. Uh, but rails are a very, very extensive thing to build properly from scratch if you want them to work, in my opinion, in my experience. Uh, you know, we can throw something together like this and it will be quite quick. Uh, but to have a, what I consider, proper two-lane system with proper signaling, power poles going down the middle, all parts connect how they should in their orientations, that is a very, in my in my opinion, a very extensive process. Um, and I have a set of blueprints I've been using through many, many playthroughs. They're, they're my blueprints. They're ones that I actually made, um, which is why I'm leaning towards perhaps it being okay to import them uh, because these are blueprints that I myself made uh, quite a long time ago. Uh, so I can explain them well. I understand them. Uh, I'm not just, you know taking what someone else has made. Uh, and if you do that, that's fine. I, I have no problem with that. But like I said, for a tutorial playthrough, I want to avoid that. And I am leaning towards importing them because I can still explain all the concepts with the blueprints and it will make our rail network expansion significantly quicker. Now we can build blueprints together, uh, but it's going to be a very long process and a lot of uh, fidgeting around with stuff, a lot of uh, trial and error, tearing stuff up, putting stuff down, and uh, while the learning experience may be good, it uh, I imagine it will become quite tiresome to watch uh, because it will not be as clean as other concepts we've covered. Uh, just because there there is uh, naturally a lot of changing things back and forth to figure out what works, what doesn't work, um, and it really is just a pretty extensive process. So I would like your thoughts, what you think should be done in that regard if you're okay with me importing this set of blueprints I've made and I can explain them and go over them or if you would like me to make them on camera from scratch in the series just keeping in mind that that could be multiple episodes long and very uh, precarious and kind of tedious to watch uh, because it, it is a fair bit of trial and error. Um, so to continue though let's see what we can do with these robots. We are starting to uh, run out of some resources. Our copper is, uh, in and of itself, looking fairly poor. I think it would be appropriate to research some robot upgrades. So you can get robot upgrades. Uh, this initial one is actually fairly cheap, uh, and it provides 35% robot speed, and this is to all robots. Uh, it's, this is to construction and logistic robots alike. And you can also get Rooker robot cargo size. So robots have a limited amount of things they can carry per trip at once. Uh, and this increases it by one. Uh, if we go over to our bonuses here, are you, uh, we, we actually don't really, well, 
yeah, we don't we don't really have um, any indication here because we don't have an upgrade. But once we get that upgrade, the storage one, it'll tell us uh, how many additional things we can carry and how much we can carry. Uh, I believe by default they can just carry one thing. I think does it even say? Yeah, cargo capacity one. Um, I, I never really paid attention to that. So uh, <clears throat> if we go over here, uh, we can have them build our smelting. Now, like I said, they're really quite slow. Uh, they can only carry one thing at a time. Once we get these upgrades, it will help significantly. Uh, and I'm going to come up here because I would like them to actually build copper. Now, once you get these upgrades, it really is a lot faster to have the robots build this than me to build it. Because they know exactly where everything needs to go. I mean, obviously I do too, but I still have to manually place it. <clears throat> uh, and obviously once they run out of materials, uh, they will stop placing things. Because they, do, they don't have anything else to place. Uh, but you can see, uh, hopefully visually, if you if you were keeping an eye on the robots there, you probably notice a slight speed increase. Uh, it's actually fairly noticeable, I would say. Uh, you can see this is getting placed fairly quickly. In fact, we're building two smelters at once right now. Uh, and I must say this is at least equal to the speed at which I would build myself, uh, provided I had the materials to do so, which I'm going to go retrieve. And if you run away... Uh, what will happen is they will run out of charge and they will slow down significantly. They will they will find me. Uh, even if I ran halfway across the map, they will come find me. Uh, but they will slow down a lot. Uh, I'm going to actually show you. I'm going to purposely get far away. You can see they're following me. Uh, but once they run out of their own personal charge, you can kind of see here it, it going down. They have a fair bit. Um, they will slow down to a snail's pace. Very, very slow movement. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. You won't necessarily lose them. Uh, they will just slow down and take a very long time to get to you. And you can see they're charging. Uh, I can charge four at once. You can see them charging there. And then they'll go in and, and dock in my armor. Well, in my inventory, uh, using the RoboPorts in my armor. Uh, also, a uh, few other nifty things here to talk about. Uh, number one... Uh, you can turn on and off your personal RoboPort with either hitting this or Alt-R or whatever you want to change it to. And this will, well, just turn it off. Uh, meaning that if I turn this off and I walk over here, they're not going to do anything because they're off. They're not recognizing that anything's here. They're just inactive. And this can be really quite nice if you perhaps don't want them to build specific things at a certain time or in general. Uh, you can turn this on and off. Uh, if they are out building things and you turn this off while they're out, they will still come and find you. You won't lose them. They will still track to you and, and, and come back and dock with you, and then they just won't continue any further until you turn this on, as you can see here. Uh, another thing to cover, I know there's a lot to cover, and much like the other aspects in this series, I will be covering these things just multiple times as we continue. Um, but we have a very nifty feature of... <clears throat> excuse me. Of uh, Upgrade Planner. So, the upgrade planner is a, is there a, is there an option here? Yeah, upgrade planner. Okay. So, the upgrade planner is very neat. So, you'll notice I have all these ghosts here of these small power poles. And I don't really want to use small power poles anymore. So, what I can do is I can take this upgrade planner and I can place it in my inventory. I can place it in my blueprint library. Place it in my inventory. And if I right click to open it. Uh, there's all these things, and what this does is this is a tool that works with robots. Uh, it works without them too, but it helps to have the robots. Um, is this allows you to upgrade one type of material or one type of item to another? So if we say we want to upgrade small power poles from that to this, and it automatically recognizes that this is the next version up. Uh, if we have this set, you can see there's now an icon. We can name it, and I take this and I drag over this. You can see everything that um, matches that requirement is selected in red. And I'm going to just drag here. And what this will do is this automatically sets these to say, okay, these now need to be medium power poles. And the robots will go out and place them. And this is an absolutely fantastic thing. For the longest time, this was actually a mod and not in the vanilla game. Uh, it was added not too, too long ago. Uh, and this works brilliant, brilliantly for pretty much everything. I, I would say the primary best uses for this are belts. It's very, very good for belts. Um, you know, when we want to make everything red belt, it's very good for power poles, even furnaces, once we want to turn all these to steel furnaces. Uh, now, 
of course, due to these having a larger range, we don't actually need all these, so I can kind of recollect some of these. I could have cleaned it up a bit first, uh, but we're just going to have the robots do this. We need to build out our smelting anyway, and I think next episode we will work on rails, but I really would like your feedback on the rail blueprints, uh, because I really am in, I, I am in a bit of a quandary with, with that in, in regards to if I should import the blueprints I've made or not. It would make things significantly easier, very much quicker, and, and just less tedious, but I do understand. <laughs> I don't want to just go back on, on what I said without getting your guys' opinion, so I'm just going to match these up here. We did finish the cargo size, so now if we click on this, you can see we have our bonus movement speed plus 35%. And cargo capacity plus one. So they can now move two items at once. Uh, we can, in fact, get another robot speed upgrade, which is also fairly cheap. This increases it by 40%. So we will, once this finishes, we will have a total of 75% increased movement speed, which is really quite good. And then these do start getting significantly more expensive. And in fact, this is an infinite research. Now, we've not really touched on infinite research because this is. Uh, a specifically late game concept uh, but there are a few tech categories in the game uh, a lot of the military ones the uh, robot working speed not the cargo though but the robot working speed the mining productivity which we've not really covered yet we will though uh, these become infinite researches and you can see we have two three four five six and then there's this little infinite symbol here and what this means is that you can research infinite levels of this. And before this starts seeming overpowered, now, if you have a gigantic Giga Factory, it can become extremely powerful, but it also becomes this very, very expensive. Uh, so these infinite researches, again, you can research this uh, up to infinity. Uh, and this gives 65%. I believe it gives 65% from this point forward, or maybe it's 50. I can't see at that point. Um, but each level will keep giving you that amount. However, the cost of this doubles every single time. So it's a thousand for this one. The next one will be 2000 of every pack. The next one will be 4000 of every pack. Next one will be 8, 16, 32,000, etc, etc. Uh, I believe the highest I've ever gotten on this, I think was like level 19 or something. It was nearly, I think, a million packs of every type or more. Uh, it's People have gotten higher. It, it gets very, very expensive, but of course your robots are flying around extremely quickly. Um, mining productivity, like I said, we'll cover that. Uh, this basically just adds in uh, additional uh, mining ability, uh, mining capability to your mine. Th this is something I think should be covered in another episode because we haven't really even covered productivity yet. Uh, we are making the modules, but that's purely for science. Um, so we'll cover that in a separate episode, but there are several researches that are infinite researches. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind uh, that, you know, once you get into late game, that is kind of what's past the technical end goal of launching a rocket, is you have these infinite researches you can complete to scale up. Uh, this research is going a fair bit slow if we check on things here. We actually are backed up on packs. It looks like... Ah, okay. I see what's happened here. So... Uh, it looks like I've goofed up a little bit somehow with our merging. You can see this is a double line of purple, even though it should really only be a single line here. So we're going to purge this and then just put it back in here. Of course, we don't want to be carrying these science packs all over the place. Uh, and then same here. Hopefully, I can just manage to pick up. It's a little tricky to line up. Pick up one side. There we go. And we're going to throw that in there. And there we go. So this will now allow these guys to work. You can see the robots have slowed down to an almost a standstill here because they're out of power. Uh, again, there used to be actually there used to be a time when the robots would explode when they ran out of power. But thankfully, that's been out of the game for a very long time, and they just move very slow at this point. Now, another trick you can do, last thing to cover here in this episode, uh, is you can actually right-click on them and pick them up. And this is a little... I kind of want to say cheaty, but it is something the devs are aware of and decided to leave in. You right click on them this basically just completely circumvents their need to charge um so this is also viable when um they're building so if i come over here and when some guys come back if any of them come back to uh 
charge, what I can do is I can actually right click and pick them up while they're beginning their charge sequence and it will basically negate that entire process. Now, it's a little difficult here. It's easier once you get more robots. Um, but you can actually pick them up and it will. what it will do is it's basically instantly transporting them into your inventory uh, and once they're in there they're considered charged. So it will negate the charging process. It's a little tedious, potentially considered a little cheaty, but it is something the devs are aware of. It's it's in the game. It's not some bug, you know. So I consider it a very viable thing to do, and uh, especially when we're building big blueprints, especially like rails, uh, it can actually be very useful to help speed things up because you can just completely go around that charging process. Uh, we can get even more robot speed. Uh, we could get our Roboport Mark II. I don't think we quite need that yet. Uh, we can get worker robot cargo size. Uh, I think we'll take a minute here to think about what we may want. And this seems like a good place to call this episode. So again, we didn't get a ton of physical things done. We get, did get our smelters built out though. And uh, hopefully I was able to demonstrate and explain the uh, construction robots and other robot related things uh, decent, decently. And uh, again, please leave your thoughts in regards to the rail blueprints, uh, because I would like to work on that next episode, get some outposts set up and, uh, and uh, so hopefully we, we, we have a verdict by then. And, uh, and I believe that will do it. So if you found this helpful, hopefully you did and enjoyable. A like is much appreciated so other people can find the series in the video and hopefully find it helpful and informative as well. And uh, if you are new to the game, I hope you're enjoying. I hope you, if you're not to this point yet, I hope you look forward to uh, you know, getting to this point and, and having a lot of fun in the late game. If you're new to the channel, uh, welcome. And if you're not subscribed, then uh, feel free to subscribe to keep up with all the content that's coming out on my channel. <clears throat> and any questions and thoughts spe specifically with the rails, leave down below. Until next time, guys, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.